I got my hands on a Canon RF 70 to 200 millimeter lens. These are my first impressions. I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel. These are going to be my quick first impressions with this lens. I was lucky enough to get it as a loner. Quick lens review if you're here for just that. It's very sharp, it's very light, it's very compact. It's only for the USR. If that's the camera you have, this is going to be a great addition to your lens kit. This is what everyone wishes the EF 70 to 200 lens was when it came out. It really shows that Canon is serious about moving to the RF mounting system. This is a great lens. So if you have the money to drop on this, and if you're committing to the RF mounting system, this is something that's gonna be very attractive to anyone that's just starting out and building their kit or switching over their kit. This is a great lens. I would recommend it. Now, let's talk about all the other stuff. And, uh, it's a good coffee. It is a full two inches shorter than the EF 70 to 200 millimeter, and it's a pound lighter. It actually makes sense as a lens. So the lens element, it zooms out. It does have gaskets in it, so you don't have to worry about any kind of dust or anything like that getting in there. And I think it's weather sealed as well. Now, comparatively, it's almost the same size as the 24 to 70 millimeter EF lens. That's why this is such a big deal for this lens. And with the ND drop-in adapter, they are almost identical in size. It has an optical image stabilizer, helps reduce camera shake, it has three modes, standard single shot, a panning optimized mode, and a mode that only activates the image stabilizer during the exposure. So definitely one and two are ones that are active. It has the control ring, just like the other RF lenses that allows you to adjust the aperture, ISO, and exposure compensation. They put an access panel on the bottom, so when you're holding it, it's actually really easy to open it up and adjust any kind of variable ND filters that you would put on. So that's really convenient and it's in a very intuitive place. So that's really well thought out. You have this release button right here. They have to push to, to take it off. It's not like the other ones where it can just unscrew easily. So you actually have to physically push it and then it stores very compactly. Most of my lenses, most of my cameras are EF mount lenses, and I have an adapter for the Canon EOS R. I've used the EF version of the 70 to 200 millimeter, and I really like it a lot. I like the photos you can get from it. I like how it compresses objects, compresses the background, how you're able to take really interesting portrait shots with it. The 70 to 200 millimeter lens is always one that I wanted, but I never picked up because it's never one that I knew I would take with me for personal use. I never wanted to travel with it if I didn't really have a need for it. It's a really big lens. Comparatively to this lens, this is manageable. This is doable. This is something that I would take with me because this matches the other lenses in the kit. It fits nicely into a camera bag, just like all the other lenses. From a photographer's perspective, this is actually no different than the other lenses that I have. I would actually travel with this size lens, a 50 mil and the 16 to 35 as my lens kit. So the fact that Canon was able to reduce this by a third overall in size and still get the image quality, the sharpness, the functionality of all this stuff, and they have a stabilizer built into it. This lens is actually really impressive. This is the one big reason I probably won't be getting this lens. All my cameras right now are EF mount and all my lenses are EF mount. There was an instance where I was using the C200 and the EOS R. So even filming this review, I forgot the lens adapter so I couldn't put my 16 to 35 on my EOS R and I couldn't put this onto my Canon C200. I was stuck just filming the way it was. I couldn't adjust anything. I didn't bring a microphone for a C200. I went to film my thoughts live on location but I couldn't really do it. I jokingly turned this towards me and I don't really think it's that good for vlogging. I've gotten so used to using the R with the drop-in ND filter that I actually missed having the ND filter. Just out of habit, I didn't bring another ND filter to use with this camera because the C200 has the built-in ND filter. I like how the adapter has the drop-in filter. I just got used to that over the last few months because I got excited and I wanted to go and test this lens out. I wasn't thinking about all the stuff that I will be needing or I would be missing. I know I won't use it as much as I want to because I would want to put it onto the C200. I want to put it onto the 1DX. So it makes more sense for me, even though it's a larger lens 
and it's heavier to buy the 70 to 200 millimeter EF mount and then I can use it on all the cameras that I own. But I don't wanna buy that one because it's bigger and it's heavier lens. I know if I design shots, then I'll use it for that and I'll rent it for those occasions. But something that I would travel with, no. This, yes, but it's this whole catch 22. If I get this, then I can't use it everywhere. If I don't get this, then I can't use it anywhere. I was hoping that I wouldn't have an excuse to not buy it. I really wanted to buy it. It doesn't look like it's for me right now because until I start having more cameras that can do RF mount lenses, I'm going to be sticking away from this and just rent it as I need it. If you only have an EOS R, this is a great lens. If you have the money to drop on it and you're thinking about it, it will serve you well. You will actually use it more than most people have used the EF version of this because of how compact it is. It is a great lens and it's gonna work out really well for you. So if you have the money, you have an EOS R, you don't have any EF glass that you're gonna conflict with, this is definitely something that I will be carrying with me. If I felt more confident that I wouldn't run into situations like I did today where I wanted to swap out the lenses and I couldn't, I definitely need to start switching out my lenses for RF lenses down the road, but I'm glad I got this loaner. I'm glad I got to test it out because it is exactly what I expected it to be. It's an amazing lens. So those are my first quick impressions with the Canon RF 70 to 200 millimeter lens. It's definitely a lens that is on my wish list to buy, but because I have EF cameras, it's not something that I think makes sense for me right now. But in the future, when Canon finally releases a pro body EOS R, then it's definitely something I'm going to look into a little bit more. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the first impressions look at the Canon 70 to 200 RF lens. I'm glad I was able to get my hands on it. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Give me a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. I'm Raphael, I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.